Okay, as a team of fans, we are here for the review for episode two of season three entitled Brothers Keeper. Now, I will try to make this video not as long as the episode one review. So uh, to get right to the point, I'm giving this the same score as episode one for being pretty solid, a uh, decent start for season three, a score of a seven out of 10. Also, this will be one of the first mp3 uploads to my new spotify podcast so the audio you hear on youtube will now also be available to listen to on spotify um my long-term goal is to get 1 million uh listens or streams or whatever the correct terminology is over there on spotify i know we can do it because the views that we get here on the channel uh we usually get around 750,000 to over one to two million a month I am pretty confident that if you all went over to the Spotify and streamed some of my uploads, I could hit 500,000 to a million in like one or two months. So please go over to Our Kind of Entertainment. I will leave a link to my Spotify in the comment section below. Now, picking up where we left off, Jeremiah, oh man, Amir's acting is something else. He just, whew. What killed it, it? It was not funny, but I did chuckle. I'm like, <laughs> this guy. Fatima is knocked out cold on the, um, you know, the parking lot, the pavement. Jeremiah's like, no, Fatima, come on, wake up. You're okay, right? You're okay. While he is doing this, I'm sorry. It's like, you know, oh, he's sobering up. He's coming to his senses. He's rummaging through her purse. And grab some money. It's like, I'll pay you back. I promise. Like, you know, I got a problem, right? You know, I got a problem. Oh, I'll, I'll pay you back this money. And I'm like, this is just so, man. And like Amir said, you know, um, I believe in an interview on Baller Alert, where it was him, Belinda, Angela, and Deja, he said that himself and his father, I believe, were former addicts. And he's pulling from his experience. And it just... It shines through on screen because the believe just the genuine acting here. I'm like, dang, this, this is some good stuff. Now, in the midst of what's going on there, Angela's walking through the parking lot. I believe she's on the phone with a uh, dude's name is Sean, the tall dude that she met with Fatima at Club Eaton in season two. And apparently he's caught feelings for her. And she's like, oh, wait, don't tell me you really feeling me like that right like you know what this is right and i'm thinking to myself i mean angela this woman had you <laughs> like a horse remember that in last season fatima was staying over this was after the breakup with zach this was season 2b and you know the with the whole paul thing going on uh she's over there trying to get some sleep but yeah yeah kaye <laughs> all that noise going on she was like tickle me elmo on top of a pony or something i don't know but in any case she sees what's going on because um, Sean is supposed to come over tonight. Angela, you know, rushes over to Fatima. Was like, what did you do? What did you do? I didn't do nothing. She fell. She fell. And um, he tries to leave. But it's like, I know who you are, Jeremiah. He was like, uh-oh. And then she's like, wait here. I'm going to call the cops. And I love how everybody online is saying the same thing. Angela, I can't believe she literally thought a crackhead was going to stay there while she called the cops. And he runs off. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. And I'm like, again, this, this man. Yeah, they, where the hell are the cameras in this damn parking garage? Huh? I know they're cameras. Canonically, they are because Andy said there were at the uh, in, in season five, I believe. Yeah. So theme song, love ain't perfect. Then we go over to the back of the ambulance. Fatima is fine. You know, I felt, you know, I just want to give Fatima a hug. I'm like, girls, like she, she, she hit that car so hard. She hit it so hard. It was crazy. But she has that bruise on her forehead now. Now, apparently the paramedics and whatnot said her and the baby are fine. Also, okay. So first of all, Angel's like, what? You're pregnant? And this is canonically accurate because in the season finale of season two, um, Fatima was giddy over the phone with Angela over some news. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, we found out she was pregnant. But Angela did not know until now. So from there, uh, she mentions she's in the first trimester. And Fatima says, hey, 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 don't call Zach due to the fact. And don't call the cops either on Jeremiah because this and I can see where she's coming. OK, here's the thing. I agree with Fatima 
by keeping Zach out of this. But at the same time, you don't know if Jeremiah is going to show up again. And also, I am furious at Fatima for not going to the hospital. I, I mean, again, I understand why she's not telling Zach. But at the same time, even though the people who check you out said you and the baby are fine, do not take any chances. And I don't want to sound selfish here, but yes, Fatima is the one carrying the child. But even though she's trying to protect Zach from himself, she also needs to protect herself. And if for no other reason, if, if no one else... If for no one else, she should have went to the hospital to check out, to double check that her and the baby are okay. Because Zach just lost his mom and I highly doubt he has the mental and emotional capacity at this moment to find out that he, he and Fatima just lost their baby. So I don't care if, um... Angela had to rush her to the hospital herself and then bring her back to the parking garage to get her car. Even though Angela was right, I don't think it was a good idea for uh, Fatima to be driving, you know, that soon and whatnot. Um, but yeah, she definitely should have gone to the hospital. That's one thing I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm kind of like shaking my finger at Fatima. Like, no, 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 you, you should have went to the hospital. So, um, you know, Angela knows that Zach is going to find out somehow, some way. How? Only you, me, and Jeremiah know about what happened. But Angela's right. I got I to gotta admit, Angela rubbed me the wrong way at the start of season two when she told Fatima, well, my mom always said, keep your options open. Fatima was engaged. But in this situation, I feel like Angela from season seven, the writing for her and sisters was really good in season seven. That kind of rolled over to these two episodes. Now, I don't know what the rest of the season has in store for Angela in terms of how... I feel about her character, but I will say these first two episodes, I really liked what she brought to the table here. Um, so she's basically telling Fatima, like, you know, I see what you're saying, but I'm just trying to look out for you. And I don't think this is a good idea. So we got that now over there or over at Rise Ventures, <laughs> man, things continue to go low because Bryce comes in with the bad news. Also, Remington, Rem Remington's acting even though I'm not the biggest Bryce fan, his acting was really good. Like, you know, every time he came into Zach's office, he looked more and more disheveled. So, hey, um, I talked to my dad and um, you know how I said he was thinking about it? Yeah. Well, actually, um, he can't help us. And um, yeah, I, I there's nothing I can do. And Zach is... What did he say? Like, you know... <laughs> I'm trying my best to hold it together because me being mad would be me taking this fan and knocking you the hell out. So he he just gets up and leaves the office because he is so pissed off right now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he also took Bryce's wallet because Bryce is like, look, I'm sorry, Zach, because he said sorry like 20 times in between these two episodes. And he's like, look, you stole one point five million dollars from me to put the money in the pot for a deal I told you I couldn't afford, that we couldn't afford. Yeah, but the return on that, well, it doesn't matter because Scary Gary didn't put the money in the account like he was supposed to, and as a result, it freaked all our money up. So Bryce's like, look, I can give you what I have, everything I have, Zach, because I'm trying to figure out how to bury my mom. I, I give you what I have. It's like, it's not much, but uh, uh it's like, uh, I, I, I can help you out at the funeral. Um, I, I got lines of credit. It's like, what, you want to bury my mom on your credit cards? I'm thinking like, well, Zach, is that really a bad thing? I mean, as long as the funeral expenses are paid, right? Right? So, um, he basically, <laughs> he pulled, <laughs> Zach pulls a Jane Jetson, you know, like in the Jetsons cartoon opening when, um, uh, George is, uh, takes out his wallet and he gives like, you know, I think like Elroy a couple bucks for lunch and he gives Judy a couple of bucks for lunch and then, uh, he gives Jane a few dollars to go shopping, but then this this heifer takes the whole wallet and leaves the little spaceship. That's pretty much what happened here. Like, you know, Zach is like, what, you ain't got no cash? You know what, just give me your full wallet. It's like, he goes off. Now, uh, strange continuity here. At the ending, of, towards the ending of season two, when Bryce went on that lunch date with that, um, 
one girl who worked at the same building as Fatima and Angela. I know they went out to lunch. And then when the woman left to go back to work, uh, the waiter came over to let Bryce know that his card was declined. I cannot remember if it was like the Rise Ventures company credit card, but I do know that it didn't work. And then I think Bryce even started using some of his other personal uh, credit cards and they were all declined. So then he called like the bank or something and he found out, you know, all Rides Ventures and the personal assets of, I believe, both himself and Zach were frozen. So I don't know if Bryce's credit cards would even work. I could be wrong, but then again, like I said, season two was over a year ago, so some of my details might be a little off. So please correct me if I am wrong. So after Zach leaves the office, you know, Preston just kind of wants to get down to business. Like, hey, can you tell me exactly what's going on with this property thing? Like, like what's happening here? Because again, you know, Preston offers to help pay for the funeral costs, but you know, Zach isn't really trying to hear that right now, but... um. Bryce basically tells him his rationale. Now, I could be in... Well, no, no, no. This is my own personal interpretation. So he essentially said that, you know, it was a big risk, but I knew that the payoff would be worth it because, you know, this would no doubt double or triple on the return. And I felt like, you know, if we got that money, Zach would forgive me. Now, I don't know if this is like some double talk. Now, in terms of Zach forgiving him, would this be because Bryce went behind his back and deposited, you know, Zach's money into this deal, even though Zach said he couldn't afford it? And or was this Bryce's way of getting Zach to forgive him for breaking his trust by trying to kiss him back in season one? Let me know your thoughts on that. And then, you know, this man has the audacity to go, well, actually, you know, I made this decision because we're partners and it's 50-50, so we can't veto a decision like that. Well, just because Zach says no, no doesn't mean that gives you the authority to say, hey, my yes holds more weight than his no. I'm going to run it anyway. And then, well, look at you now. You're $3 million in the hole. And I feel like that's an interesting number because that's the exact amount of money it took to get Sabrina out of jail back in uh, season five of Sisters. And what was it? Robin had to put up 1.5 and Andy had to put up 1.5 million. So, yeah. But Preston takes a look at the, you know, information on the property. I'm not going to hold you. I feel like Preston is probably going to come up with the money to be like that third partner because Gary backed out of it. That's what I'm thinking. Now, not only, you know, does he have the money that he can help with the funeral, but I know he says he doesn't have all the money needed to, you know, get these two out of the $3 million hole they're in. But I think, I think Preston is probably going to, you know, figure out exactly how much he needs to put into the pot so that Rise Ventures can, you know, make that money back and then some. That's just my theory there. Uh, so from there, he, you know, goes out of the office to look over the paperwork. And Bryce like, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Preston. Yeah, Preston. So Belinda pops up in the hood, seeing Connie, Tony, and Nate playing a card game. She's in her feelings because Nate apparently didn't stop by her lunch. Uh, well, her job with uh, some lunch. Because like, you, girl, you got a whole cafeteria at your job. Nate, come on now. With a woman as fine as Belinda, you put them funky cards down and you bring that woman some lunch. Problematic as she is, oh. I put my uh, video game controller down, my comic book down, my manga down, my whatever down to go bring my lady some lunch. That's all I'm saying. So um, they mention how, you know, things have kind of changed given the fact that Connie really is like the only one left uh, in this neighborhood because, you know, Nate and Tony grew up there, but, you know, they moved on. Jeremiah, you know, he's always high and whatnot. Miss Gladys is gone. And, you know, Belinda learns that, you know, Zach's mom has been an addict, you know, pretty much their whole lives. And as a result, it was only a matter of time before she croaked. And um, then they go into information about uh, Connie wants to go check on Zach. And I'm like, Connie, sit your ass down. You've done enough. You've done enough. Basically, she's trying to be a Karen just popping about out of nowhere unannounced. But um, 
Tony spills the beans on, you know, because Belinda tries to say, girl, you better not go over there. You know, if a team ain't going to play that, you know, me and her used to be close too. And then Tony says, yeah, yeah, tell her, tell her how y'all had a fallout. But then Tony gives the details on that. And then, you know, um, they make a point to mention like, you know, hey, Zach only has eyes for um, Fatima because Connie even mentions to Fatima in episode one, like, you know, Ms. Gladys said that, you know, Zach looks at you in a way that she he never saw him look at me or Karen. And then you could tell Belinda felt some kind of way about that. Like she almost wants to test whether or not it's true, even though, you know, she almost caught a bullet the last time she tried to pull one of them so-called tests. Now, Jeremiah comes out of nowhere and they're like, hey, man, what's up? Come over here. We want to talk to you. You know, man, it's like, I didn't do nothing. What are you talking about? Because he's pissed off at kind of like, Luke, you lie. What do you mean? I lied. I didn't tell you that Fatima had that money. I said, you need to go talk. If you want to know about the insurance thing, you go talk to Fatima and Zach. Well, I didn't do anything. I didn't hurt her. What do you mean? She fell, man. And I'm like, dude, this man is so baked right now. He's telling on himself. So then the group kind of puts together that, you know, Jeremiah probably did something to her. And Belinda's like, no, we need to call. It's like, no, 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 don't call. It's like, we need to figure out what's going on because we don't even know what happened. So, you know, Belinda and Nate kind of get into it because the whole crew want to go over there to figure out what's going down. And um, <laughs> Belinda even threatens Nate, like, look, if you don't let me go, I'll go over to my other man. Look, there better not be another man. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, Nate. You talking about you mad at Belinda might having, you know, might having another man on the side, me. But don't you have a whole wife at home? So I don't really know what the heck you talking about. So from there, we go over to Bryce, who pops up over at Angela's unannounced. <laughs> Man. And um, she's like, look, you got to go because I got company coming over. So essentially, Bryce just needs to talk to Angela. He pretty much says, like, look, my dad can help out. And I screwed up big time. So I don't know how I'm going to help out Zach or get this Rise Ventures thing, you know, back on track. So he asks if she has the money. He's like, no, he's like, you don't have that kind of money. It's like, hey, what are you talking about? You don't know me or what on cable up? millions okay never mind wait do you know anybody it's like basically she pulls an andy here and says like look i know some loan sharks but these are the kind of guys that will break your leg so it might not be the best idea this dude is desperate and i'm like yeah bryce is about to do something stupid so he pretty much thanks her for that information but uh in the midst of the emotional breakdown she's like hey i'm sorry but you gotta go and i'm not mad at angela because one he was the one that popped up unannounced and Two, she, he's just, she's not the one that did this. This was all Bryce is doing. And then Bryce has the freaking all day. And let's not forget, Angela acted the same damn way when she saw Bryce with that woman going to, to a lunch date. And it's like, why are you and your feelings when you broke up with Bryce, which was, hey, you had every right to do so, but you've been with Sean and Neighing like a horse, and then you're getting in your feelings because he's going on a date with another. Get, get out of here. You can miss me with that. But no, Bryce is like, wait, I can't believe you're kicking me to the curb when I need you. And it's like, Bryce, get your ass out of her house. Go on somewhere. Go. Get. Get. But as soon as Bryce leaves, Sean is like, wait a minute. Who's that guy? Like, what's he to you? I mean, if nothing else, he keeps popping up. And the way you treat me, it's like I'm just a piece of meat to you. It's like. You know what you're here for. Go to the room. Go to the room. You know, like she just takes control from there. And then not long after she comes out of the room and Melinda's on the phone because she's trying to get the 411 or the details or what's the stitch sitch. Wow. Those are dated references. She's basically trying to get the rundown on what's going on with Fatima. Like, did you hear about what do you know about Jeremiah and Fatima? Girl, nothing. Stop playing. Nothing. What are you talking about? It's like, look, well, Jeremiah came by because I was over there in the hood with Nate and them. And we all heard about something about, hey, Fatima fell. I didn't do anything to her. So they're all going over to Zach's house now. And I'm going to, don't you dare go over there. Fine, okay. Well, y'all ain't going to keep me out of the mix. So basically, Angela gets dressed and rushes over there. She calls Fatima and um, she lets her know, like, look, everybody and their mom is coming over to the house. Like, Zach's about to find out. So Fatima calls Zach and he just pulls up and then she calls Tony and leaves a voicemail. This is kind of what, this is kind of where the episode fell apart for me. This, this wasn't a compelling cliffhanger. So then Angela's still on the way and then it's like, she goes to the door, opens it and goes, Oh shit. And 
we see that Zach is outside. He turns around, he's smiling. So clearly he's talking to somebody. I'm like, who's this Deja or somebody? I don't know. And that's it. The episode ends there. Like it's supposed to be suspenseful. Didn't really work for me. I think that this cliffhanger, honestly, if, if it wasn't for the Jeremiah acting and, you know, a few other scenes, I would have given this episode a 6 out of 10 because of the lackluster cliffhanger. Seriously, episode 1, that cliffhanger was something else. Episode 2, the cliffhanger was like, meh. You know it's not suspenseful because season, or I'm sorry, the season 3 trailer, we see the exact same outfits these characters are wearing. Fatima's out there in the lawn with Zack and kisses him, so it's not going to be dramatic. But, yeah. Huh. So yeah, that's really all I got. Um, decent episode. I can't wait for next week, but let me know your thoughts on episode two in the comments section below. And like I said, I made this video less than half the link of episode one's review. So like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.